Hello guys, I am Mr. Genomics from Genomics in Your Hood podcast. And today we are going to discuss about the various career opportunities that are available in the domain of genomics and genome informatics. Before we discuss in depth about the various career opportunities that are available for life science graduates and postgraduates, I would like to take you guys back in time to the year 2008. It's time for the World Economic Forum, which is held every year in the beautiful city of Davos, Switzerland. In attendance are top dignitaries and technocrats from all across the world. Some of the notable faces being Michael Dell, owner of Dell EMC, Mr. Peter Thiel, a prolific venture capitalist with investment portfolio boasting of companies like PayPal, Facebook, Oyo Rooms, and whatnot, and many other notable faces. Enter Anne Wozniski, ex-wife Sergey Brin, co-founder Alphabet, and co-founder of 23andMe, one of the premier diagnostic companies on the face of this planet. She distributed close to 1000 genetic diagnostic kits to all the top dignitaries present in the forum. It was not, not as if these dignitaries couldn't afford these kits. This was a promotional gimmick. A well thought out, well charted, well strategized promotional gimmick. It was a known fact that post the Human Genome Project, there was immense interest in this domain and people were looking for the right time and opportunity to invest some money in this domain so that they could reap out rich dividends out of it in the future. So this was Anne Wozniski distributing 1000 genetic diagnostic kits to top dignitaries including Peter Thiel and Michael Dell at the World Economic Forum held in the city of Davos in the year 2008. Now, What was the impact? See, any promotional gimmick that you carry out for a brand, for a product, for a movie for that matter, its success is judged by the amount of interest that you are able to create in that particular product, right? So this gimmick of sorts paid off in its true sense. If we talk about the two gentlemen whose name we had taken before, Mr. Peter Thiel and Mr. Michael Dell, both of them ended up investing a lot of money in this domain. So if we talk about Mr. Peter Thiel post this World Economic Forum and look at the amount of investments he has made, this is just half of the data, the rest of it is still undisclosed. So Mr. Peter Thiel made an investment of close to $20 million in Helcon Molecular, close to $110 million in Synthego, and an undisclosed amount in Cambrian, Cambrian Genomics. Similarly, if we talk about Mr. Michael Dell, Michael Dell invested close to $110 million in Edico Genomics, along with the investment in Edico Genomics, Michael Dell has also kept aside a fund of $4.5 billion dedicated specifically to research and development in the field of genomics. And trust me guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The actual list is growing day by day. We don't have to go that far. If we talk about our country, India, a lot of emphasis is being laid on projects and companies which are working in the field of genomics and genome informatics. Make in India 2.0, an initiative of the government of India that encourages startups coming up in various domains, focuses specifically on two domains this time around. One is genomics and the other one is robotics. So if we talk about VC funding happening in this domain, we have MedGenome, which has generated close to $40 billion as part of its Series C funding. We have BugWorks, which has generated, generated close to $30 million. We have Strand, which has generated close to a $1 million. And the list goes on. 
and the interesting trend is our own garden city bangalore is emerging as the epicenter of all the development that is happening in the field of genomics so if we talk about all the budding entrepreneurs or as i would like to call them as biopreneurs there's a lot to offer as far as genomics and the development that is happening in the field of genomics is concerned now there are many of us who might not be that interested in you know treading their own path and pursuing their kind of work they are more interested in getting into regular corporates and pursuing jobs there there is a lot to offer from them as well if we talk about the genomics industry the next generation sequencing market as such it is expected to go and literally hit the roof with an estimated revenues of close to 25 billion dollars by the year 2025 and an estimate cagr that is compound annual growth rate of 19% genomics is definitely the domain to look out for in the future if you talk about the number of jobs that it is going to generate there are close to 2 million jobs that genomics alone is expected to generate with an additional 3.2 million jobs that are being generated indirectly as far as academic research is concerned genomics is proving its metal in that field as well uh, with close to 640 crores being approved for research in various projects related to biotechnology around 230 crores have specifically been approved for projects which are related to genomics accounting for its serious translational value so beat corporates be it academic research be it pharma be it it genomics is finding its footing everywhere in all the sectors if we have to look at major look at the major stakeholders in the genomic ecosystem according to some reports it is suggested as i had mentioned in the previous slide as well the dna sequencing market will exceed dollar 20 billion and now as per the current reports if we have to go over the current reports it is expected to cross 35 billion dollars now again coming back to the stakeholders in this domain so if we talk about the job sector there are some major players which are responsible for generating the maximum employment first are it giants like google and amazon which have slowly and steadily started venturing into the field of genomics with google starting its own dedicated servers and cloud systems for handling and manipulating genomics big data if you talk about healthcare and genetic diagnostic companies there are companies like 23 and me map my genome med genome and various other I, pha, big pharma companies which are venturing into the field of genomics so that the time period involved in drug development is reduced significantly coming to tech companies tech companies like wipro and infosys are also setting up separate and dedicated wings for research and development in the field of genomics with wipro coming up a dedicated genomics facility in pune if you talk about various service providers like bionavit genotypic eurofins and other companies they also require a lot of trained manpower who can apply their computational knowledge and biological knowledge to interpret data so yeah interpretation of data is quite important because you can generate as much data as you want but you need skilled manpower to analyze it and find something meaningful meaningful out of it so service providers are looking for such talented individuals who possess the skill set of interpreting data and extracting meaningful information of out of it which is useful to various researchers out there so despite of having such widespread applications we rarely see life science graduates and post graduates actually looking out for jobs in genomics or pursuing a career in the same instead of working in a domain which is financially and personally quite rewarding they end up choosing careers in totally unrelated domains and end up working on things which they have not even studied in the 5 years or 4 years of their academic careers 
so in the next podcast we'll try to figure out bottlenecks which are affecting the growth in this domain and trust me guys with your love and support we can actually overcome them and move towards a genome literate society miss helen keller had very rightly said alone we can do so little together we can do so much so we'll need your continuous love and support guys thank you thank you so much this is mr genomics signing off